Father, I ask that you come and bless us this morning. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I want to thank you what you have done, and I want to thank you for what you're about to do. I ask that you wrap your loving arms around us and just hold us tight, Lord. I want you to bless those that could not make it here with us today. Bless our sick and shut-ins. I ask that you give a prayer to my family who lost our sister cousin from Knoxville, Tennessee. Her name is Eloise Gordon, but we called her Babs. And we're going to miss her, Lord. We're going to miss her so much. And I'm just here to tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, I'd like for you to follow. I'm sorry. Call to worship. I'm the leader. I, you ready to fight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved God calls us to come together in love. Love, love is from God. God. We are all called to live in God's love. Love, love is, is from God. God. When we live in God's love, our love overflows. Yes, love, love is from God. God. Let, Let us worship together in love. Amen. 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 The standing again for their affirmation of faith. I believe, I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. be seated. Thank you. Woo. There's a lot going on when you're up here doing this by yourself. Um, I just want to welcome everyone into the house of the Lord this morning. I don't really see any visitors. I would like to recognize though my two best friends. Been knowing them forever and ever and ever. If you want to know something about me, ask Beb Pierce and Casey and Marty Pierce. They about as bad as Donna. They know all my business. Amen. Amen. Um, if you're going to follow along with our announcements, I don't have anything special up here, just what is in the bulletin. Of course, our Bible study is on Wednesdays at 6.30, Saturday school at noon. We have a leadership, leadership meeting um, May 14th at 10 a.m. All are welcome. Um, then we have our third pillar day at 10 a.m. Please come out. And of course, our choir rehearsal is at 11. Um, also want to highlight our giving tip, our offering. There are a few ways that you can give. You can mail in your offering, offering at 293 East Barthman Avenue. Of course, that's Columbus, Ohio, 43207. Um, you could also give online at www.clareumc.com or also in person as the ushers come up the aisle. Um, are we gonna have offering? No? Yes. 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 Always. Okay. Always right. So um, I'm gonna have um, my future son-in-law, Fred. He's gonna come up and share a song with us this morning uh, during our offering time. Amen. So Fred, see that's what you can do. You can just say, hey, I need you to sing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wanna stay on the good side of mom. Okay. So, so Fred, if you wanna come on up.
everybody. Praise the Lord. We still in praise mode from Easter. Yes, yes. yes Lord. And, um, he's alive. We're still yes. celebrating who he is and who yes. he was and what he will be. Yes. Um, some people, look, I was looking at the back of this thing today, man, and this was really deep. It hit home. It, it says some things. If you're not reading this, read this today. Uh, somebody might need, need some encouragement yes. today. Uh, somebody's you know, grieving today. Yes. So this song, uh, I was asked to sing short notice, so I don't have a repertoire of songs, but this song came to my heart, and, and, and it talks about the little bird, mm -hmm. the sparrow. Yes. And if you know about the sparrow, you know that, that, that sparrow, he always has his eye on. Yes. His eye is always yes. on the sparrow. Yes. Yes. If the sparrow don't have to worry about a thing, why do we? So uh, my voice is not the greatest lately as just overcome the nearness. So bear with me as I'm saying from my spirit. Yes. Why should I feel discouraged? And why? Well, I'm going to have to fry that boy some chicken. Make him some chicken and some greens.
next word we will hear is from our beloved, we call her Nana, Nana, Reverend Nana. Reverend Nana is coming up to give us the word this morning. Amen. visitors. There's just two folks back there, three, that I don't know who you are. <laughs> Stand and give us your name. And That's Ruth Ann. That's her, Leah. Oh, Ruth Ann. Nice to see you, Ruth Ann. And these two young people. Oh. Renee. Renee. Nice to have you here with us this morning. I think you've been here before. Uh huh. Good to see you. God bless you. Amen. This morning, uh, I'm substituting for our pastor who is away. He'd asked me to preach this morning, so I ask your prayers to be with me Amen. as we grow through the word of God. And uh, it's not an easy task preparing, but if you, if you interject God into it, it becomes easier. Amen. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Our title for this morning is Love is More Than Lip Service. Amen. Why don't you repeat that? Love, Love is more, more than, than lip service. service. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you on this beautiful Sabbath day. We come, Heavenly Father, bowing humbly before you. We ask, O oh God, that you would come into our time together, our worship time, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. And we pray, O oh God, this morning for the church universal as people gather to praise your holy name. O oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for those in our congregation who has a desire to be here but are not able to do so. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with them. This I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Church, say amen. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this it is the first Sunday after Easter. Yes. And our lesson in the gospel comes from the 13th chapter of John. Jesus has continued to prepare his disciples for this to come. The crucifixion has not taken place, but Jesus knows what is happening. He knows what is coming. And he is speaking with his disciples, for they will be the ones who will carry the torch once he goes to the cross and ascends into heaven. I'll John, the 13th chapter, I'm not sure, what, yeah, we have it on the board. 13, 33 through 35. And it says, little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me and just as do to the Jews. So now I also say to you, here I'm going, you, where I'm going, you cannot go. New commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples. If you, if you have love for one another, then you are my disciples. How many believe that we're disciples of Christ? Amen, amen, amen. 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 That was a question that I felt like I needed to ask this morning. How many know? And we, want to remember John the 14th chapter said God so loved his world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish yeah. and they will have eternal life Amen. so this morning we want to talk about lip is more love is more than lip service bear with me in this particular scripture Jesus is teaching his disciples how to carry on, to be what he's calling them to be after his departure. For Jesus knows what has happened in the last few days that, and what will be happening in the days to come. He knows that his disciples are similar to us. Our faith gets shaken sometimes. Yes, sometimes we're not sure which way to go. 
we're not, we don't often take it to the Lord in prayer. For if we do that, then we know that our journey will be easier mm -hmm. if we take it to the Lord in prayer. So he's teaching his disciples. And as we gather in worship today, we affirm that the created, created blessing that God has given us is love for us. God so loved us mm. that he gave his only begotten son. That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why we have Easter. God so loved us mm. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but we would have eternal life. God's love that forgives us our sins and make us children of God. God's love that brings us together in fellowship with one another. That's why we're here this morning. God's love that sends us forth to proclaim the death. And it's not enough to proclaim the death. We must proclaim the resurrection. Yes. Yes. And if we proclaim the resurrection, then we know that Jesus lives. He lives today. He lives today. Now, you don't see yes. the disciples that were with him in the Bible, but I'm looking at everyone that raised their hand this morning to say that they're disciples, that there are a lot of disciples. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, how can I be a disciple? How can I carry on the word of God? Well, in the first place, you must know it. Well. Therefore, we must read it. We must listen to the word it goes forth on Sunday morning. We must tune in to Bible study. All of that is the word to feed you as disciples. And then we have our private time that we go to the Lord in prayer. How many do that? How many go into their closet and pray? How many fall on their knees when they wake up in the morning? I do because I have to thank him for bringing me through the night. Because my friends, I stopped by to tell you that there are a lot of folk who didn't get up this morning, yes. who didn't get up. Right. So therefore, I know that my God is good, and not because they didn't get up, but God has called them to another place. Yes. Yes. So we praise him for that. All of us have experienced a home going of a relative, a home going of a friend. But I, I think as disciples of Christ, he's asking us to remember that those who have gone home, we will meet again. Amen. I was reading a devotional book yesterday, and it talked about this book I have, and I'm going to, it's a sample, but I'm going to get it, that there are folks who've been to heaven and come back. Well, mm -hmm. well there yeah. is a heaven later, yeah. correct? Yeah. There is a heaven. Mm -hmm. So I say to us this morning as the disciples of Christ, we are called upon to love one another. Yes, ma'am. And then... God's love that forgives our sins that make us children of God. God's love that sends us forth pro to proclaim the death and the resurrection of Jesus. As God's people, we gather together in this congregation to affirm one another. What is most important for us? God's love. Isn't it wonderful to know that God loves you? And there are so many people who do not know that today. They have not heard that, or they have not heard it enough time to believe that God loves them. As Jesus says this morning, a new commandment I give to you, that you should love one another, yes. even as I have loved you. Right. Think about that. Love one another as I have loved you. What does God require of us? And I think sometimes we get a little <coughs> mixed up on just excuse me, what God desires of us as disciples and as the children of God. Excuse me. What does he desire of us? What does he require of us? <coughs> it's very easy to join a church or to tell people that we love God with all our heart and all our soul. Well, we may tithe. Mm -hmm. We just talked about that. We may teach. Mm -hmm. Some of us do that. Mm -hmm. We may sing. We have a wonderful choir. I miss them this morning. We may visit the sick on behalf of our congregation. Some of us mow the grass, our folks who mow the grass, and clean the church. Mm -hmm. Some of us sponsor the youth. All of these things are important to the congregation, but we must do them out of the love of God. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. 
if we do not love one another, we miss so much of what God has for us, what God desires for us. So we cannot serve him on Sunday morning and go out and blasphemy over the week. It doesn't work, my friends. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's very, as I said, it's very easy to join a church. And we, we encourage that. Yes. But it's more to it than that. Yes. Once a person comes forward to join us, that person becomes a part of us. That's right. Right. And we should be ministering to them, Amen. having classes, encourage Bible study, encourage coming together as fellowship. It's not enough just to leave people hanging. You know, we usually get the names and we know the telephone numbers yeah. and we yeah. can contact them to say, God loves you and so do I. Yes, Come back right. to our Amen. church. Amen. We may visit the sick on behalf of our congregation. We've done that. We've done that. If we, but if we do not love one another, it means nothing. It means nothing. Someone made a statement that it is love the world needs. The response, the response to that was, I love the world. It is the people I can't stand. <laughs> Yeah, you've heard that, I'm sure. All right, all right. And when I hear that, I'm like, so who, who is the world? Who, who do you, who do you, when I hear people say that, someone made a statement. I think sometime we can identify with that remark. It's easy to love in the abstract. The world and people in general, we have no problem with that. It is the people around us that drives us crazy. You heard people say that? <laughs> Yet it is precisely those people around us people nearest to us with whom we work, neighbors next door, and the people we sit next to in church on Sunday morning. Mm. Jesus calls us to love them. Mm. Jesus calls us yes. to love them. Yes. Love in action. That's what we're talking about this morning. Love which finds expression in kindness, mm -hmm. courtesy, tolerance, accepting of those around us. Jesus calls us to love one another and to bring that love to light in the way we treat those around us. Amen. But it is another thing altogether to put that love into action, make love concrete in our attitudes, our actions toward others. And I, I share with you this morning, I'm preaching to myself too. All right. All okay? Right. All right. I'm not perfect. And it's been said that we may have, listen to this, we may have a heart of gold, but so does a hard boiled egg. <laughs> Think about it. As a congregation of God's people, we're called to care for one another, to set aside our preconceived notion of who is and who is not acceptable to God. God accepts us with our scars and all the baggage that we come to him with. You know, I know you all have seen beggars standing on corners with the sign. It's not an easy task to stop, is it? But I did one day, week before last. Not only did I share some finances I had with this person, but I shared a prayer. Yeah. And when we departed, tears were streaming down his face. I didn't know his name, he told me, and I can't remember now. But he was begging, he was homeless. And he was on the south side of the city, around Great Southern. But I say that to say that I'm not perfect, but God stepped in that day. Now, yeah. seeing my time just driving on by, and I do drive by some, yeah. and I say to you, make sure you're safe when you do that. Amen. That's right, amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's not up to us to decide who is acceptable by God. We are to believe according to the scripture that we are all created yes. by God. That's right. Right. That we're all disciples of Christ. We must understand that as we encounter our neighbors, our friends, our family. Sometimes families are rough. Amen. You know, but you, you have to. And they know you, okay? Families know who you are. They know when you went to church and what happened. So if you do not act it, families are the first to judge you. That's right. Because they're the closest to you. Right. They're the first to judge. They're the first to say, well, Nana went to church and she's mean today. <laughs> but 
He's calling us to bloom where we are. It's God's love that will heal us, that will prepare us for ministry, to prepare us for his work in the kingdom building. My friends, we uh, pastor preach often about the future for this church, but unless God is in it, it's not going to happen. That's right. When I was pastoring another church at Wesley before I came back home to Clare, the church was in such a state when I arrived that I did not allow the congregation to have an administrative board meeting without going to Bible study and prayer first. Okay. We, had, we took about an hour, mm -hmm. and we had Bible study and we had prayer. That's why folks didn't stay. I don't know why pastors doing that, but we, we ain't used to that. But toward the end, when we finally, after a year or so, and we finally came together, they realized how important it was. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, folks, I tell you, everybody changed. Those who had been hurt, those who didn't know where they belonged, but they changed after we went to God in prayer. You know why they changed? Because they let God lead them. That's right. yeah. That's right. You see, we, we think we can do stuff in the church and, and do it on our own. Right. I, you know, I am a, a retired pastor. I can do anything without God. That's right. I couldn't stand in this place without God. And God is an awesome God. Yes, I is. prepared three Praise sermons to preach to you this morning. Can you imagine three sermons to preach to you? <laughs> <laughs> and God kept taking me back to the ones that says, love is more than lip service. Wow. Wow. So it must be someone need to hear that this morning. Mm -hmm. Someone need to absorb it into your own psyche and into your own heart and say, love is more than lip service. Our lives must be characterized by love and action. Jesus said, as I, as, as I have loved you and love, as I, as I have loved you, love one another. Is this the church? We just celebrated 107 years of being in ministry on this corner. What a blessing. I just don't know if you realize what a blessing and what a foresight our ancestors had, had when they built this church. And I was here when the mortgage was burned. Mm -hmm. Amen. There were sacrifices. There were people who didn't think we needed to do it. I can recall some of the actions that took place here. But guess what? God steps in. Yes. And we're still here. Yes. Because God stepped in. Yes. He's taken home so many of our folks. Folks who were here when this church was burned. The mortgage was burned on this church. There's so many people that have gone on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you all know who they are because yeah. you're, you're the children of the people who have gone on. Mm -hmm. But they left a legacy, yes. yeah. a beautiful legacy yes. that we must, we're on this corner for a reason. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. We're on this right. corner for a reason. You know, we could be anywhere, but we're here on the south side of this city for a reason. A foundation of love has been laid for us by the pastors, the laity that has sacrificed that we would have a building in which to worship. Praise God yes. and to the fellowship with one another, well, another in love. We enjoy these benefits because our experiences, God's love, and decided to share that love with others. Their sacrifice shared made God's love the foundation of this congregation. Well, and now it is our turn, it is our time to experience God's love and continue to share with others, continue to share. We live in a world, my friends, that are increasingly hostile to the Christian faith, well, a world that grows more and more self-centered every day, a world that seems to have lost the meaning of the word sacrifice that does not understand and the commitment of faith, commitment of faith. faith. This is a world in which we are called to share God's love, but we must admit we've gotten caught up in the world. Well, yes. I mean, That's we can true. get caught up in the world. Yes. We find it difficult sometimes to love others because we judge. Well, yes. <laughs> we are among those whose time is limited and who find it difficult to make church time for, make time for church. We're among those who often fail to share God's love with others. 
we must begin to share the love of God with others. Yes. Shake somebody's hand and say, God loves you, and so do I. Yes. It's simple as that. But, but, yes. Uh -huh. God loves you, and so do I. Turn to somebody. Amen. 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 The commandment of John's gospel, chapter 13, reminds us, as it did the disciples, that we believe, truly believe, that Jesus loves us as he says it's done, and if he says it does, and if we accept that God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness are free without a price, no matter what we've done or said in the past, if we believe in earth-shattering, history-changing truth of the resurrection, then we indeed say with confidence, I am a believer. I am a Christian. No doubt. Now, does that mean that you're perfect? Does that mean that you don't commit sin? No one is perfect but God himself. We are not perfect. We make mistakes. We say the wrong things at the wrong time. We do the wrong stuff at the wrong time. But it means that we're on a journey. Yes. Preach. And if we're on a Preach. journey, we're going to have some valleys, right? right. Down and story. some mountains. We're on a journey, my Down the story, preacher. But if you look up, God is there. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. God is with us. Yes. We would not be here if it were not for God on Amen. our side. Amen. God on our side allows us to be in this place. I came to this church, let's see, Shay was five, she was 60 some years ago. I met my husband, and he was a part of this congregation. I have not regretted it, not one day. I came out of Mount Olivet. But I have not regretted that. Mm -hmm. This is where I feel home, where I feel love. Right. Well, and yes, I can man. take that love right. into the world. Amen. You can love. take that love into the world. That's right. yes. It's Amen. more than a lip service. Right. It's caring. Come on. Come on, preacher. I went with the choir. We were out at the, uh, where Peggy was in the nursing home. And we minister to people there. And I love that. That was good. We have to do that again, Donna. But you all who were with us with the choir. And the people were very receptive to us mm -hmm. in that particular care facility. There are ways, if you want to join the choir, do that. If you want to join anything here at this church, be a part of it. Give us your gifts and your graces that God has blessed you with. Because it is through God's grace that we're here. Through God's grace. Yes. And then his mercies is with us forever and ever. Amen. He knows all about us. Yes. There's a song that says Jesus knows all about our trouble. Yes. He knows. Yes. I know he knows. I'm a living witness. Mm -hmm. And I'm on my knees all the time. Calling upon him. I know he said, what does Mamie want this morning? <laughs> well, grace and mercy. Yeah. Questions we may ask. Mm -hmm. How do I show this love to my brothers and sisters? It's a good question. There are four ways, and I think somebody needs to put that on the board for me. Four ways that the disciples accomplished this. Now, can you imagine uh, the followers of Jesus who had walked with him, he taught them, they saw him heal the sick, they saw him raise the dead, and he's saying to them, I have to leave you. Can you imagine how brokenhearted they were and how confused they were? Right. Some had left the crowd. Cleophas was one of them. And Cleophas and another disciple were on the, the, uh, the road, and Jesus caught up with them. And Jesus says, what are you talking about? And they said, have not you heard? They didn't know who he was. He walked behind them, and he walked upon them. They was on Damascus Road. And he said, haven't you not heard? They said to him, where have you been? Have you not heard? They didn't know who Jesus was. Right, right. They said there was... There was a man that came among us, and we thought he would be with us forever, but they crucified him back there the other day. And Jesus said to them, I am he. Well, thank well. you, Lord. Yes. And they were in total shock. He says, I'm yes. walking with you. Right. And they were in total shock. Yes. And Jesus says, I have to depart with you, but I will send another comforter, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. to walk with you. And they didn't want Jesus to leave them after they found out who he was. Yes. But how did they do it? Four ways the disciples accomplished their 
love that is more than lip service. They devoted themselves to the teaching of Jesus. They broke down everything they saw and everything they heard. Now we call this the New Testament. That's how it came about. The New Testament came about because somebody, the disciples, wrote down everything Jesus had said to them. We must devote ourselves to the study of God's word in the Bible study with others of faith. How many of us watch on Wednesday evenings? Sometimes I can get it and sometimes I can't. Yeah, it's not always clear. But at least I know it's happening that there is. So our pastor does a virtual Bible study every Wednesday at 630. Number two, they devoted themselves to fellowship, just simply being together for the joy of it. We need to do that. And I realize the pandemic cut into a lot of our things that we're planning to do. But we can gradually go back to that. To that. They devote, number three, they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. That meant Holy Communion, which we will do next Sunday, but also other meals such as adult ministry, time together, adult ministry. Yesterday, I think there were food that was served to the community yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some today, they have some left over yeah. for today. Those are the kinds of things that we reach people with. Those are the kinds of things that says, I love the Lord and he loves me. Those are the kinds of things that we need to be doing. Number four, Amen. prayers. A church, listen to this, a church that prays together can and will become the church that is calling us to become. We gather together for Bible study each week and for prayer. We list those who are in need of prayer. They're on your bulletin board. We include in our prayer time our Claire Church family. In our prayer time, we include our church family. Always pray for your family. Church family, home family. I pray for my grands and great grands because friends, we're living in some perilous times. Whether we want to accept it, whether we know it. We're living in some times and, and uh, in, in this city alone, there are murders every weekend, uh, guns, you know. So we're living in some perilous time to the women. We are living in a time when you have to be careful where you talk. That's right. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful if you're alone. That's you right. have to be careful. But you can do that without losing faith. That's right. You can right. do that without losing faith. I don't leave my house without praying, Lord, watch over me. Well, like I told you, I pray all the time because I'm not perfect yet. Yeah. Only God. See. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I have to pray. I live alone and I have to pray all the time. I do. And I feel that's where he's my comforter. Right. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. He's my comforter. Yeah. And he tells me in his word, I will be all right. Because well. guess what? Jesus paid it all. Paid it all. Yeah. And all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. But oh, he washed it white as snow. Yeah. That's the Jesus that I'm talking about this morning. Yeah. That yeah. Jesus yeah. who loves you unconditionally. There's nothing we cannot do if God leads us. There's nothing that we cannot accomplish if we let God lead us. It's when we get in it that we mess it up, baby. We mess it up. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. We mess it up. I think we're at number five. Real love that is of God will enable you to love your enemies. It will give you a heart of forgiveness. You've heard people say, I forgive them, but I won't forget. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you said that. I, I'll forgive them. Real love of God in your, will, in your will give you the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You will become a true follower of Christ. They will know that you are my followers if you love one another. Love in action is more than lip service. Love and action is going that second mile in spite of the obstacle that, is, that will be thrown in your way. Yes. It will be. It will happen. Obstacles will be thrown in your way. What you do with them well, is the question. Do you say, I can't do it? Or can you say, God knows what I can do? Well, That's right. Well. Love and action is that craving inside of you. You want to do more. 
to understand your purpose, to seek his face, to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? I, served, I told you about me serving a church that we had administrative, before we had administrative board meeting, we had prayer and Bible study. Loving action is going that second mile in spite of all the obstacles that would be thrown your way. Love in action is that craving inside of you to do more, to understand your purpose, to seek his face, to ask yourself, what would Jesus do before you act? Before you act. God shall be in all that we do. He should be as a congregation. We should not gather for anything without praying first. And inviting the Holy Spirit in, because that is the comforter that Jesus said to his disciples, I will leave you with the comforter. Yes. Yes, and that did. is the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes. So we need to say, come Holy Spirit Amen. and abide in each one of us. And if we do that, we can carry out the work that God is calling us to do. We need to affirm God's call on our lives as leaders in the church. Why? Because of our trust in the Lord and not ourselves. Yeah. Confirm our leaders in the church. Those folk who are trying to make it happen. We need to confirm that in our congregation. So as we go forth from this place today, I trust you've heard something that says to you, I need a closer walk with Jesus. Yes, well, walk. And there's a song, Just a Closer Walk. Yes, yes, yes. And it says, Grant it Jesus, if you please. Well, Y'all know that song? Just a closer walk with me. that the doors of our church are open if you're here this morning and you feel like you want to join our congregation we encourage you to come to the altar if you're here this morning you want special prayer you're welcome to come to the altar for prayer time the doors are open 
daily walking close to thee. Let that be your prayer of the rest of the day. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Dear God, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you, O oh Lord, for those who have gathered in this place. Let us go from this place knowing, Heavenly Father, that without you, we have no strength. We have no witness. We have not a testimony. But let us walk with you as we depart from this place. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, May it rest and abide with each person as they depart from this place. And the Spanish said, Biocadias, go with God. Yeah. Amen.